I do need to let everybody know that we are streaming our hearing live on YouTube. The DeKalb County Magistrate Court YouTube channel is where we'll be streaming live. If anybody um, is observing our court proceeding, please understand that you are not permitted to record, nor are you permitted to photograph any of our proceedings. And that includes the participants. Neither of you, neither, neither of you are permitted to record or photograph or put any of our images or any part of our court proceeding on YouTube. Okay. We've had some issues with that. And I'm letting you know now, if anybody uploads or takes any of our information to try to embarrass or slander somebody, I will hold you accountable and I can hold you in contempt and holding you in contempt means that I could issue a warrant for your arrest. Okay. So let's just not do that. We're going to be respectful and professional this morning. We're not going to deal with any, any type of, um, um, uh, attempting to embarrass anybody while we're in court this morning. Okay. All right. So I'm judge Jason presiding over the calendar. This is child support abandonment calendar. I'm not sure I'm sitting in for judge, uh, Scott. So I'm not sure if some of you have already been before her, I'll be able to look at the notes and tell. So, but I'll ask you when I call the calendar, if you've already, uh, uh, been, if this is your first or second time. So when I call the calendar moms, uh, if you could say first time or second time, then I'll know, um, how many times your case has been before the calendar. Um, so this is child support abandonment calendar. It has nothing to do with abandonment of love or affection or not seeing your child. A lot of dads are like, what is this? You know, it's not about that. It's about, you have a child support order. Moms, you're supposed to live in DeKalb County with your minor child. You have a child support order and you're not paying your child support. When you fail to pay child support in 30 days, then the custodial parent, which is the, generally the mom, not always, sometimes it's the dad, has the uh, right to file um, an abandonment warrant for me to make a decision if you have the ability to pay and you're just refusing to pay. That's the key. I have to find that you're committing a crime that you just have the ability to pay and you're refusing. A lot of these cases, um, you know, deal with uh, people have had their relationships, their ups and downs, um, different scenarios come up and um, it's not always a crime. And I'm not here to just issue warrants for people's arrest because a lot of times I, I encourage people and people, the fathers actually can get on track, get your child support together, get your life together, work a little bit harder if you can. You may have to work two jobs. You know, I look at it this way. The law makes two assumptions. The first assumption is that it's in the best interest of every child to have their mother and father in their lives. And this is the most difficult calendar that I deal with because nine, almost 80% of the cases, the parents do not even speak to each other and the child is in the middle and everybody thinks they're right. Moms think, oh, well, I'm right. I'm not letting him see my child. Dads think, well, you know, she's not letting me see my child. So I'm not going to try to see my child. And every time I see all these news stories on the news and I see children, uh, um, doing things and everybody thinks, well, it's not going to happen to my child. Well, you just don't know. I was a juvenile court judge. You'd be shocked what happens when children don't have both parents in their lives. However, I have to tell you that this is not family law court. Um, if you're a dad and you want visitation with your child, the mother does not have the right to withhold your child from you. You can go to court and you can file a petition to legitimate your child. When you legit, uh, Mr. Mallard, if you could start, stop moving for me, please. Um, if you can uh, legitimate your child, you can just go to court and do it. You don't have, a judge will give you visitation because the judge makes a the, the assumption that that little child, that little boy, that little girl, they want to see their dads. They want to be in their lives and you have to step up and do it yourself and you can. And the law, and I'm, I'm sorry, the judge will give you visitation. Um, all I ask is if you do do the petition to legitimate your child, uh, you just have to pay the court costs. Um, you don't have to hire an attorney, but if you do choose to do it, please make sure that you follow the, the um, follow what the judge gave you and be in your child's life. Each one of you dads plays a significant role in your child's life to determine all those juveniles and kids you see on TV. Everybody thinks, not my kid. huh? I tell you, you just never know what 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 powers to be are out there trying to influence young kids. So if you're even girls, boys, especially, it's just very, very daunting. But I, I know I say this and it goes one in one ear and out the other for some parties. But I just as a judge over 19 years doing this calendar, it's just heartbreaking to see how divisive the parents are. Um, and especially neither one could put their, their differences aside to look at the best interests of their child or children. But um, sometimes I, I, I hear good stories. But anyway, with that being said, we're not going to be handling any of that today. Um, this is about how much child support is due. So what I'm going to do, moms, you have to live in DeKalb County with your minor child or children. Um, and dads, we're going to go over your order. A lot of you have not paid child support in a while. Your license is probably suspended. Um, with your license being suspended, you probably don't even know it, but we have attorney um, uh, Arena Camarillo. She'll be on camera soon. She'll share with you what needs to be done to get your license reinstated. So you may be out there driving thinking that your license is instated and it's not because usually if you fail to pay over, if you go over 60 days, 30 to 60 days of no payment, they'll, um, they automatically suspend your driver's license. And that's not good for anybody because how can you work if you don't have a driver's license? Um, what, um, so what I'm going to do is only address what's uh, been happening in the past 30 days and how to move forward. Dads, I do give you the opportunity to step up and get on track um, and try to pay your child support. You can go to the fatherhood program um, to get enrolled in the fatherhood program and they'll reinstate your license and help you get on track. If you really have a, you know, some felony or misdemeanor convictions, I hate to throw that out there like that. But unfortunately, some of my dads have a hard time getting jobs because they have criminal history. It's, it's just what it is. And moms, you guys know that too. So I'm not here 
as a judge to do anything but to encourage the fathers to get jobs, to pay the child support, to move forward. The the mothers are already taking care of their the child, providing a home for the child, providing food, clothing. And your contribution is not to the mom. It's to the household that your child lives in to help help support that child. OK, a lot of these cases have uh, passed due amounts. Those those matters cannot be handled in a criminal court today. You have to go to the superior court that gave you your child support order. When you go to that superior court, you can file what's called a contempt moms, and the judge could determine whether or not the father should be in contempt for the past due amount. But that's not what we're handling today. OK, now, one thing I will not allow is anybody disparaging anybody in court. You're not going to say anything inappropriate. I will cut you off in a minute because I'm not going to allow anybody to present any type of negative um, uh, or disdain uh, toward the other parent. It's just not acceptable. And that's in why I always emphasize, case, please be respectful. Okay? Uh, Mr. Barry, you're under an order to pay $456 per month. You have a past due amount of $3,165. It looks like one payment was made. It may have been an intercepted payment on December 18, 2023. It may have been a, a payment you made yourself. Uh, let me look at Judge Scott Snow's. Both parties were present. Reset. Ms. Barry said he was going to pay $900, giving him another chance. Doesn't pay before next court date. A warrant will be issued. That was on December 15th. So you, of course, made that one payment. Um, and she was going to monitor payments. Both parties were present. All right. She was going to monitor payments, but there have been no payments. So there's one payment made December 18th, 2023, and no additional payments. So it looks like the notes are she's going to go ahead and issue the warrant. But I'm going to ask you to unmute Mr. Barry and you can explain to me what's going on, because at this point, um, there's uh, been no payment for January, February. I don't know what your history is. It says uh, judge stated that if Mr. Barry doesn't pay, a warrant will be issued. So she's told you that a warrant would be issued. You guys both came to court in January because you did make the December payment and then no payment since then. So I'll hear from you, Mr. Barry, because she's probably going to go ahead and issue the warrant for your arrest. OK. Um, I can pay. I can pay uh, three today. But if that's what she's gonna do, that's what she's gonna do. Well, I mean, what's going on with you? Why aren't you just paying? Why do you have to wait until today to say I'm gonna pay today? Because I, I just got, I just got the money. So you, I got the money yesterday, and I was trying to go on the app. I need to get my R I R N number again so I can get get on the app. Okay. So what's going on? Are you not working or something? No, I'm not. And why aren't you working? Um, because I have a I have a problem I have a problem with my back, and I'm trying to get that situated. So me working, I haven't found a job that's going to allow me to the days that I can't even move, be okay, okay with that. Okay, so you're saying you have some type of disability or something? Yes, and I'm trying I'm trying to proceed with that. So okay. whatever 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 dollars that I get, I try to collect. So I can so I can give it to her. I don't have no problem with that. Okay, let me just see how old. Let me try. Gosh, I got that situation where my I'm. Uh, were you involved in this case uh, and Miss Arena Camarillo at all with Judge Scott? Do you yeah, have any? I don't have a recollection of it. I mean, okay. I'm sure I've been here from time to time, or Miss Carson. Okay, let's see. I am sending him his IRN number right now. Mr. Barry, if you want to take a moment and write that down, it's in the chat. Okay. So how old is a child in this case, uh, Ms. Irina Camarillo? Can you share with me? Because I, I can't get into any of the applications because Adobe's not working. Looks like there are two children, one born in 2016, in May of 2016, the other born February 2020. Okay, thank you. 2020? Mm -hmm. So yeah. you guys have like young children? Yes. Yeah, Jasmine was born in 2020. Okay, wow. Okay, well, was your back hurt then? I mean, were you injured then, or were you working at that time? Um, I, I was I was injured since uh 2008, but but let me let me let me explain this. Everything everything was fine. Everything was fine until I didn't want to do anything for her. So now you want to put me on child support, but I got I got text messages and all that other stuff saying that I'm a good father this and I'm a good father that and I spoil my kids and I do this that and the third. Uh, hold on, I hope Mr. Barry stop. No, no, no. I just told you we're not going to get into all that. Okay. So, so, well, that's 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 I'm explaining. I'm explaining that. Okay. Okay. You've already explained that to Judge Scott. I'm stepping in for her. My question is whether or not you are. Try, are you? I mean, what changed that you're not providing the support for your children? If you're not providing the support, then I'm going to let Judge 
uh, let her know that you didn't provide the child support. She was hoping you would pay the uh, support for January, February, and she would have dismissed the case, but you're not paying the child support. So let me let me uh, meet you for just a moment. Okay, Ms. Howard? Yes. Are you aware, has this come up already, that he has some type of back injury? Yes, but um, he has gotten a job before when we, were, when we worked together. And he's always making excuses of why he's not going to keep, why he didn't keep the job. Um, he loves to do this, um, what you call that, uh, uh, working here, working there, making 20 here for 30 there. I've seen him with a, a, a chunk of money in his hands when he took my son to um, uh, um, children's place. This is like a, um, a place where uh, uh, you get taking hand clothes for kids. I know for a fact he can make money. But he I, he refused to, and then he gets upset with me because he's saying that um he cannot talk to his kids unless he pay. That is not true. Okay, My so son, what it what it looks I, like here um, with the notes that Judge Sherry said that I guess Mr. Barry Judge uh, she may have found that you had the ability to pay, to to do something. Um, I'm going to mute you, ma'am. She may have found that you had the ability to earn some type of income. Have you gone to the fatherhood program yet? I'm going to ask you to unmute. Me? No. Yeah. All right. So there's a fatherhood program that takes people like you. Can you stay in? You keep showing me your ceiling. I need to see you. Okay. So she must be finding that you have the ability to pay and you're refusing to. So there's all these documents attached to the case. Is there, are any of these evidence from any doctors that you have a, a, a back injury that precludes you from doing any type of work? No, that's what I'm proceeding to do now. Okay, so how are you supporting yourself financially right now? Well, it's it's here and there. What does that I'm, mean? I'm, okay. So who's paying your rent or where are you living? Well, actually, I'm I'm staying here. I'm 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 blessed to have a place to stay. I'm I'm really not having a place to stay. So so you can say I'm homeless, but I'm I'm granted to stay where I'm at until they decide to. Say, leave. Okay. Well, let's let's do this. Let's try the fatherhood program because maybe you just need uh, Miss Howard. Bear with me. Arresting him is not going to do anything. You're not going to get any money. I, I I've been doing this a little bit longer than Judge Scott, so I'm going to tell her about. Maybe she's not familiar with the fatherhood program, but what that fatherhood program does it it gives the opportunity for um, the fatherhood program, especially if he doesn't have his own place and things like that. He's just kind of hustling here and there. It gives them the opportunity to get employment so you can get your consistent child support because issuing a warrant, they're going to, if they find that he's disabled or unable to work or whatever the circumstance is, um, if you don't, if you don't comply with the fatherhood program, uh, then she's definitely going to issue a warrant for your arrest. So Miss uh, Arena Camarillo, can we, but you still need to pay that child support that you were going to pay this month. You said you were going to be able to make a payment today. So when you do side hustles, is it just like helping friends out doing things like that? Yeah. Something like that. Yes. Do you have a car? No. Okay. Um, sounds crazy. I'm sure if you're almost homeless, you don't have a credit card either. Just a minute. No. I see, Miss Howard. Okay. So when did your life kind of go to the downturn? Well, it's it's always been it's always been dealing with the situation that I'm in with 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 my back and everything, and I try to make it work. So so she's saying that. Me getting clothes and, and stuff that the kids need. I mean, hey, if I gotta be out all night, that's then, not what I. That's not what I asked you. What? That's not what. Let's not go there. Okay. Well, no, I'm saying. I'm you saying. Made, no, hold on, hold on. You created with her two young children. You have a lifetime that you have to figure out how to help support your children, and we'll figure it out. But I'm going to start you with the fatherhood program. Uh, I've, been, I've been supporting. I've been supporting my children. This is what I understand, and, and everybody want to bypass this. I've been supporting my children since they were born. It's just the fact that when me and her stopped being together, now all of a sudden I'm going to be on child support. That's well, the issue that I had. And okay. anybody don't want to pay attention to me. Okay, listen, listen, listen. Okay, I see why, why she's going to issue the warrant. You're not listening either. So let me let you listen. Come back into the screen, please. Okay, let me explain to you. It doesn't matter what her relationship is with you. Mm -hmm. You have a child support order issued by a judge to provide child support. You have to pay that monthly child support to the mother to help her provide for the children, whether you like it or not, the way it's being done. You probably were already doing that amount. But now that you have a judge telling you, you're like kind of rebelling. Well, it's not going to work. because well, that, it's gonna, That's not the case. Though. Just, don't cut me off when I'm talking, please. OK, so what I hear you saying is 
she's putting me on child support because she's mad at me. So what? You have to get over it. You have to pay children. You, you chose to have two children. So you love them. That's awesome. You're with them. That's awesome. But you have an order to pay child support. So you need to pay it. So I'll let judge, uh, judge, I'll make a note for judge um, Scott that I'm recommending the child, uh, recommending the father program. Go ahead and put you in that one. Um, participating in that program, they'll help you get on track, help you find a good job with your injury, and then mom will get consistent child support. You said you were going to make a payment today. Or are you still making this week or today? Um, which means you've been able to do some side hustle. So are you making that payment? Yes. Okay, so I'll have uh, Judge uh, Scott's clerk call you if Judge Scott's directive is that she's going to issue a warrant for your arrest because of the non-payment. But if you make the payment, um, uh, then that'll cover your March payment. Then you just have to make the April payment. Listen, even if you can't pay the whole thing for some reason, just try to pay, you know, $100. If you pay, I always tell dads like $75 a week. Or if you pay, you know, it, it's showing that you're making an effort to comply with the court order. And I think that's where you're getting yourself in trouble here. You're not trying to pay. I'm sorry, you have 500. That's not correct what I just said. You can break your payment down in a, a weekly payment, which is easier instead of trying to make full payments and try to pay as much as you can. And so if your payments are 125 a week. If you can try to get out there and do what you can, at least pay 125 as close as 125 a week, you're complying and this is dismissing. You're not going to go have to go to jail, get picked up, stay on in this stuff for, until your child is 18. So the question is, it will have to be for a judge to decide. Do you have the ability to make the money and you're refusing to? Well, not this judge. This is going to have to be through a criminal judge that's going to be in court and make a decision. And that's why if we have to arrest you, they'll decide that it, whether or not you have a true injury um, and that it's inhibiting your ability or limiting your ability to work. But what I'm going to do is ask um, if she wants to issue the warrant. Let's, well, I'll ask her to check on money to see if they make the payment. If you made the payment, I'll ask Judge... Um, uh, to consider setting the, setting the case out two more months, allow you to go to the fatherhood program, see if you can get on track. But Mr. Berry, if you can make the payment for this month, starting in April, just work on trying to figure out how you could pay $100 a week or as close to that as you can, okay? And then you don't find yourself in this predicament. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Excuse me? Yes. Okay, I just want to make sure it doesn't make any sense to fight this. You have to just say, okay, this is what I've got to do. And you're contributing to the household and the mother's house to help her provide for your kids. It doesn't mean you don't love them. It doesn't mean you haven't supported them in the past. It's just, this is the way this it works. When you have a child support order, you just have to pay it to the court. Okay. So just take off all that angst and frustration about she, I'm not doing it for her. So she doesn't that. Okay. That that's your truth. That's fine. But that's not what's important here. You got, and it doesn't mean you don't love your children. So I'm going to put here, um, I'm going to put my notes and then Miss Ford, you can put your notes, suggest the fatherhood program. Uh, Miss Serena Camarillo, can we send him the information for the fatherhood program, please? Yes, he'll he's got a, a case in Clayton County, so I will send him the information, but he'll need to call and then request that from his agent. Okay, and we have his his email address. Oh, you'll need to call the child support office, Mr. Barry, because they're not in the cab. Um, you you're out of Clayton County, and if you could please tell them that you'd like to register for the fatherhood program, then you'll start going to that program, and that will help get your license reinstated in case you want to get your license reinstated, even though you don't have a car right now. Things can look up; they can change. The kids are young. You could eat. You know, there's jobs that you could do even with a hurting back. So just don't be frustrated and angry about the situation. Just say, you know what? Let me let me do better. Let me go ahead and get myself together. Go to the fatherhood program. Participate. Stop being upset about how I'm in the system and just pay my child support and get a good job so you can support yourself and not have to live in somebody else's basement or house. And you can get your own place. It's going to take time, but you can do it. Don't give up on yourself. Yes, and Your Honor, when he calls, he could actually ask if he could get into the Parental Accountability Court program in Clayton County. Again, as Clayton, I won't know all the um, all the parameters they have, but that's what he should ask about first: Parental Accountability Court, and then fatherhood, um, because they do potentially have a pending contempt coming up uh, from the notes I saw. So that means he could get into Parental Accountability Court, or at least uh, that's what he should ask for, Mr. Barry, when you call. You know when the contempt is? Because, you know, I don't like when we have a contempt. They just now started the process, Your Honor. So um, that's the reason I didn't inform the court earlier. I know the court, do, it, it's not moved forward yet. So there's been no service. So okay. I wouldn't stop this yet. Okay. So, Ms. Howard, what's happening with that? And Mr. Berry, um, there's a contempt proceeding being filed. And that, that contempt proceeding, that's the judge that issued the order or the court that issued the order of child support. Mr. Berry, at that time, they're going to make the determination of your uh, whether or not you're disabled. Um, or and if so, then they're going to adjust the child support to minimum wage, you know, just to function. But that's going to happen. And that's happening at that contempt hearing. The judge is going to decide 
whether or not there's enough um, uh, evidence to show that you are disabled and that you don't have the ability to earn the income. And then when you get disability pay, if you do get it, um, then the children should be able to get um, disability pay through your disability. They should be able to receive payments through your disability. So I'm going to go ahead and put it back on uh, in two months to uh, uh, let Judge uh, Scott decide if she's issuing a warrant. But I think if you make your payment this month, you make your payment in April, try to make weekly payments or two payments a month to the best of your ability. If you're not working, I always say we can't reduce your child support, but try to pay at least 300 a month. You know, try to pay something substantial so that substantially complying. So you're at least putting effort. We got to see effort. If you have to go out there and hustle and do whatever every week, then if you can make, you know, $200 a week hustling, just put $100 every week and then you're not paying the full amount, but you're trying. And that's what we have to see. OK, not one lump sum payment. A lot of people can't come up with a lump sum. So let's try that effort. OK, I'm going to encourage dad to pay weekly payments. But you said you're making the payment today. Yes. OK, thank you for that. OK. And then also, um, she sent you the the number, I guess, to, did you get it? Yeah, it popped up. I think I got to okay. go into the chat to get it. Oh, yeah. All right. So go ahead and make that payment again. Uh, I know mom's probably tired of this, but I just really, sometimes the fatherhood program and the contempt mm -hmm. of just kind of bring things to full circle. So hold on, Mr. Barry. Yes, Ms. Howard, go ahead, please. Um, We have went through this three times. This is the third time with... The judge asking him, is he gonna is he gonna make a payment? He says yes, I'm gonna make a payment after after we got off the thing. Haven't gotten the money yet. Okay. She'll I probably issue the warrant. Pay. She'll probably issue the warrant, but I'm gonna let her make that decision. I'm putting notes in the case that he failed to make the payment. And so she'll probably look at the case on uh on Monday. And if she doesn't see, or she's gotta give it at least three days, if she doesn't see it, she'll have her clerk call to let uh, Mr. Barry know that the warrant's been issued and she'll let you know as well. And so the case will be removed from the calendar, okay? Okay, but I'm not trying to get him to be put in jail. I just want him to help me with his kids. Okay, I understand you both. I'm this 100%. So, I know. I, mean, I know. That's, 100 that's with food and clothes and everything. He's not trying to help. I understand. But, okay. Right. Uh, I understand. I mean, you've been saying that, I'm sure, for all these months. I'm not trying to give him another break. I've just some, I take a different approach. You know, I just try to say, look, you know, if this is what you want to do, go in and out of the criminal court system for the next you know, 15 years of your children's lives, you can, or you can make a decision, but, um, or you can make a decision to try to find something that you could do. I mean, to, to, to provide for your children. That's why I try to say, break the payments up per week. If you go out there and you help, you can't help anybody move. I don't know what you can do to help people do what skill you have. What, what type of industry were you in Mr. Barry before this case happened? Where did you mechanic. Go? Mechanic. You're, you're a mechanic. Come on. I, you can get a, they'll help you get a job. You can get, you can go work in Jiffy Lube. I had a mechanic the other day. He how, said you, how, how, you, how you gonna work at Jiffy Lube without a license? Why do you have to have a license? Yeah, because you gotta you gotta drive the cars. That's a that's a liability. Okay, Mr. Barry. Well, then you need to learn how to catch the bus and get to work. Oh, I ain't got no problem catching no buses. I, I said my issue is somebody somebody allowing the days that I cannot move around be fine with me not coming to work. That's what I said. I didn't say I can't get nowhere. Okay. Well, you're going to have to find something part-time that you feel comfortable doing. I understand that you have back pain, but you're going to have to have a doctor's note. You can't just sit there and say you have back pain. You've got to present evidence to the court, and that's what they're going to do the contempt hearing for. You have to have a, a, a lawyer's note, a doctor's note. You can't just say, I have back pain. I have back pain, too. We all have back pain. Some is worse than others. I get some is worse. Some is worse than others, but you got to have a medical doctor's slip. All right. So I'm done with this case. I'm going to let Judge I'm going to let her know. She'll call you and let you know if she's issuing the warrant for your arrest and you could just turn yourself into Cap County Jail. But she may give you one more chance if you make the payment and you start making weekly payments Then she may give you to see that you're making an effort. Um, I think she'd give you a second chance. It's just going to be a suggestion I make on your behalf. All right. Uh, so that, judge, judge, one yeah. more thing. Yes. I was I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia. Okay. I have pain every single day. Right. So basically, that doesn't stop me from taking okay. care of my babies. Yeah, I understand. I, I I mean, I do understand. I think that Mr. Barry has the ability to pay something, but he's upset about your relationship and you guys have to deal with that on your own. So, OK, well, if, she'll, if she issues the warrant, she'll give you a call. You guys have a good day. When is her next court date? Not mine. Whatever date that is. It's, it looks like it's May 17th. And I'm sorry, Miss Howard. I'm, I'm just trying to see if the fatherhood program can help. Because Mr. Barry, if they do the contempt on you, if the judge finds you in contempt, they're going to hold you in custody until somebody in your family comes up with $2,000. You have a choice to do it your way 
and do it right, uh, uh, our way and do it right, or you can do it your way and you're going to end up in jail. And if you don't care about that, that's fine. I get it. Some days, like, I don't care if I go to jail. So that's up to you. So I hope you make your payments this month. Um, Miss uh, Ford, if you could put a note, dad indicated he would make a payment today. Um, a judge suggested uh, that he start making weekly payments, review the case if, um, in May. And if she decides that she wants to issue the warrant and not give you that second chance, then that's fine. Uh, Miss Ford will give you a call and let you know. Thank you guys. Have a good day. Your excuse from court. See you all on May 17th with Judge Scott. Your Honor, okay. if I can provide a quick update since this um, calendar was sent to you. Uh, the calendar indicates the last payment was February 28th. Um, however, there has been a, re a payment made March 6th in the amount of $21.50, and it was via wage withholding. Oh. So it looks like dad's working, but he's not making enough money to pay child support. So that is not good. We're going to have to work on that. Okay. Good morning to you guys. I'm presiding for Judge... Um, Scott, this morning, let's see, both parties are present, both parties are present, let's see, we have, uh, you have two children, seven years old or, or, or about, and nine years old, somewhere around that time frame, it may not be perfect, but they're younger children is all I need to know, and you guys were last in court, uh, she told you to increase your child support payments, of course you have to increase your child support payments, so you have a child support, oh, she advised mom, yeah, I mean, you're only getting a hundred and ninety three dollars a month for two children okay well yeah you definitely need to go with child support i'm sure you already have because that's not even sustainable i mean you can't really do much with that that much for two children that you guys have together so were you guys living together um i'm going to ask you both to uh, to uh, mute yourselves please remain muted did you guys live together when you had your children no okay you weren't married or lived together okay so dad's under an order to pay child support uh, past due amount is $11,465. Um, dad is working and it's coming out of his paycheck, but it's like $10. And then $9 coming out and February 28, $21.50. Okay, Mr. Dale, Dale, come on now. What's going on here? Un unmute for me, please. This is, you know, you have to pay the child support for your children. And this is not, I mean, you don't even have a, Honestly, uh, I mean, most child support orders are enough to cover for both children. This looks like maybe for one, but nevertheless, you're not even paying that. What's called that's fifty dollars a week. Uh, the, to be honest, like you know, like you said earlier when you first joined in, not bashing, not talking, but I do have three other children, so okay. that's why that became that amount. And due to prior events, there were more financial stabilities than just child support. So the amount was not an issue prior to, but after my incarceration, getting back out with stuff on my background and on my record, I am actively working to do better, but just getting my license back due to child support, trying to get back into the swing of things. That's so really what's going on. Okay, all right, well, thank you for sharing. So your other three children, are they on child support? One of them is, but the other two, I literally have with me on, uh, I would say, a 50-50 basis. Okay. And um, um, how long have you been back in society trying to find good employment to get back on your feet? Just got back a year ago and recently got a seasonal job due to no background check. And then just got another job because the seasonal job wasn't making enough to pay. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Uh, um, I, uh, what county are you living? In which I'm county? in Douglas, Douglas County. Oh, you're far because we have a, a referral. Have you tried the fatherhood program yet in your county? Uh, yes, ma'am. Did the fatherhood program and everything, but it's in Douglas County. It's without a license. There was a lot of places that wouldn't hire me, uh, and once oh, I no. got my license, okay. now I'm working on a vehicle to get around. Because, like I say, again, not bashing, and my apologies, no disrespect to you. Prior to, financial stability wasn't a problem. So I had a vehicle. I was able to do things, events, uh, holidays, stuff like that. So now I'm just trying to get back to that. Okay, so let me ask you a question. One of the things that I, I, I share um, is that the child support order in your case is literally $50 a week, Okay. So because you're already have had some history with the system, you know, you're going, if we have to issue a warrant, you're going to have to be on child support and moms get frustrated, you know, like, you know, come on, the judges keep giving him a break. Well, the big picture is that once the dads get on track, they're good. 
but it's getting you on track is what's what the issue is. And so, um, you know, I see you're trying to pay something and the employer's taking it out. Um, sometimes you, uh, you know, there are places. I used to have a list of places. All you have to do is Google it. People, uh, places that hire people with a criminal history, um, including convicted felons. I'm not going to ask you if you're a convicted felon or, or, or not because we're streaming live and this is nationally being uh, possibly being viewed. So um, I don't know. Let me see, Judge, the docket notes, but you really can. Um, let's see. She did. Mom just filed. Uh, she said, suggest a second income to make the payments. Well, I think it's when did you get your license back? Uh, it's been honestly less than a month. Okay. And you're in the fatherhood program now? I already completed the fatherhood program. Okay. Did they give you any? job sources any opportunity Every, yes ma'am and i went to multiple interviews and due to my background i got turned around and everything without a vehicle is like even my my current job is a two-hour walk to and a two-hour walk from so trying to get another job is in my plan but i have to get a, a vehicle beforehand so you don't have like mom sisters brothers cousins anybody that you can that can help you get around no, ma'am. Like I said before, it was. Uh, what about the bus? Uh, oh, before bus. it was you and Miss Hadrick, huh? You guys, it was your relay. Well, what about the bus? You guys don't have a bus in Douglas County? No, ma'am. The only bus is an express from Douglas County to HE Homes <laughs> over by Six Flags. Okay. So, um, so if you don't, I'm sorry to get personal, but as a judge, I just like to know. So, um, are you living with your mom, family? How are you supporting yourself now? Yes, ma'am. Living with uh, my mom and yeah, that's about yeah, that's really it. My mom and like I said, my kids, my uh, significant other, and she's actually looking for a job. But like I say, everything without a vehicle is essentially okay. the issue. Okay, so you had these two kids, and then you went and had more kids. No, ma'am. I had one, then one with her, and then another one, then another one with her. So you have five kids. All right. So how many kids did you have with Miss Hardrick before you had? How many kids did you already have when you guys were in a relationship? One. You already had one. Yes, ma'am. And then you had two with her. No, we like I said again, we weren't in a relationship, so it was one, then one outside, then one back with her. Okay. So you may want to work on not having any more kids for a while, so you can get yourself. You know, yeah, as a judge, you know, I, I, I can't tell you what to do. But, you know, every time you choose to be in a relationship and have a child, you have all this responsibility. And as a judge, I look at it like, well, you already are having a difficult time supporting these children. Why would you keep having babies? I'm going to be honest with you. That's how I feel. And I'm, no. I'm just saying because, you know, when you're on your feet and you're doing well and you could support five and six kids, then by all means, if that's what you and the mothers want to do. But in this case, you got to figure out. I'm saying it from my heart. You know, try not to have any more babies while you're trying to get your life together because it's not fair to the child. It's not fair to the mothers. At some point, once you have no longer have a relationship with mothers, all mothers are going to be like, I want my child support for help support my child, especially if you move on. But with that being said, I'm trying to see what 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 to do here. You're making payments, but they're not sufficient. You know that. Um, I don't know what the workforce is in Douglasville, Georgia. Um, I don't know that you have the ability to pay and you're intentionally refusing to pay because then I have to issue a warrant for your arrest. Um, but certainly, you know, you making a payment of $25 a month, it's not enough to do anything. $10 some months, some weeks. I mean, so, I guess they just, I mean but you saying that you're working two hours to get to work. And then so you're you're you and your. You have to see hear how this sounds to me as a judge. OK, so you have Miss Hardrick and her two children. And then you have another girlfriend with children with her that are both of you are living with your mom and neither one of you have any income. And it's kind of perplexing, you know, like, OK, well, what's going on? Why aren't people working? Why aren't you working? Why isn't your girlfriend working? But if you're both in a financial predicament, then, you know, um, you know, I guess it's maybe hard out there in Douglasville. I don't know. I thought Douglasville was getting to be a bigger city these days. I, I'm not quite sure. Um, technically, you're not substantially complying with the amount. But hearing what you said, if that's the truth, then. You're on hard times and that's not a crime. Um, 
was just trying to figure out how to move you forward. I think it's a great step that you got your license reinstated, but you can't buy a car. You can't pay insurance. You can't do anything without a good job. And you're kind of like, well, I, I need to get a job. I need to get a car before I can get my job. And then, I mean, get a good job. And so you're kind of in this scenario, you know, which came from oh, the no. chicken to the egg. No, ma'am. No, uh, no, ma'am. Not even to interrupt. I can, I can get a good job and walk with no problem. It's just due to the fact of walking. If I'm paying for an Uber, it is costly. So I try to walk so I can substantially make a payment. But when it comes to, I got, again, not to be trying to disrespect. When I have a vehicle, my visitation is no problem. My conversation is no problem. My time is no problem. But, but when it deal, comes to. Mr. Deal, guess what? I just saw you have an Apple Watch on. Yes, ma'am. Due, okay. due to a, a Christmas gift years ago before I even fell on hard times. Okay. So so where, where are you working now that you have to walk two hours? I'll get with you in a moment, Ms. Hardwood. Go ahead. Where are you working in? To be respectful, Judge, I, I don't want to have that conversation. No disrespect to her. But I've had issues before with my job. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, then why are you not? I mean, why? even if you work, let's say I have one dad who had 12 kids. I'm like, really? Anyway, <laughs> he had 12 kids and he was working at um, Subway, but he was working extra overtime as long as, you know, once you're there, you're there. Why can't you just work more hours? And he was making enough money, which I was kind of shocked. He became the manager after two years and he was making like six forty thousand, I think, a year after a, a long time. But he was paying his child support and they were taking it out of his paycheck because when it comes out of your paycheck automatically, if it's substantially complying, then we don't have to issue a warrant. So I guess my question is, if you're having to walk two hours to work, then why aren't you getting 40 hours a week that you could just stay there for 12 hours of work every other day or something? I, I guess that's my question. Like, why aren't you bringing in enough money to pay? Did you just start this job? Can they give you more hours? Yeah, I've literally only been working at this job for a month, but I guess that's where I have to get in touch with child support because, I mean, I don't know what's the percentage that's getting taken out. When I can see the amount that's getting taken out is a little more than 25 to 35% of my check, if not more, when it comes to what she's receiving, again, I do apologize. I didn't, when I was told last time, I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm putting in 40 hours, but it's still only a partial amount that's going to her when oh, I know this. You are putting, out. sorry for interrupting you this time. You are putting, working about 30 to 40 hours a week. All right. Well, let's look at, um, let me, let me get with Miss Arena Camarillo and, and mom, I hear, I'll, I'll hear from you just a minute. This doesn't make any sense that it's coming out of his paycheck. He's working 40 hours a week. Do you, uh, we'll look and see if you have up, open child support orders. So thank you for sharing that. I mean, that makes no sense. If he's working 40 hours a week, then we should be getting the $200 a month easily. You, you go ahead and unmute for me, please, Mr. Rita Camarillo. It's a it's in Cobb County, so he will need to call them to find out why. However, I'm gonna I'll look up really quickly to see if he's got other cases. I don't necessarily show that it's splitting. This makes no sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, I do show another active case. Let me see if it's splitting with that case. So, oh, okay, got a case with. So money is going there as well. So mm. it looks like that order is for two ninety nine a month. So as an example, thirty three dollars also went here on March sixth. Um, thirty three dollars also went there February twenty eighth. Hmm. So I, mm. I, I am I am doing my best to put in more overtime. I and I definitely am. And again. Can I, can I ask a question really quickly? So so what I see is like, you're saying you're working 40 hours a week. And I see in December, you got paid weekly. So that amount was looking um, was looking healthy. But then in January, you only got two paychecks. It wasn't every week. And then in February, you got one paycheck to us. So that is a huge decline. Mar you know, so, so was it 40 hours a week in um, February and, mm. and January? No, that's when that's when I had switched jobs because I was working the season in December, getting as many hours as I can put in overtime. That seasonal decline came uh, January. And by February, that was my last check. I hadn't worked the entire time since the previous payment. So then when I got another job, that's when uh, we had to reschedule last month to this month because I had just gotten that job a week before the court case. So how many paychecks have you gotten from the new job? From this new job, I've only been there, uh, say, a month and a half. So I've gotten about 
four, about four checks. Cause my first week to two weeks was in the hole. Okay. So your honor, so, so I think that might paint the picture for the court of he, the right amount might start coming out soon. The, you know, we've only seen one or two checks that are now coming out from that one. Okay. So you're back to 40 hours a week now. I put, I'm doing my best to put in that if not more. Okay. All right. So, um, okay. I'm going to mute you for a minute, Mr. Deal. I'm glad we have the conversation to know that there's another case that's splitting, but you have to make enough child support payments for two. So because you're working and if you have a side hustle, which a lot of people do, you know, that you have to pay. So you're supposed to be paying. You probably need to pay a hundred dollars per case. So each mom gets 50 a week. If you could do that, if it's not coming out, then you're supposed to supplement it yourself. But give me one moment for the for the child support cases. I'm, I'm sorry, Judge. not even the guy. I know you about to do that. But just in, in the consideration of that. Because of incarceration due to child support, there is probation fees as well. That's a personal. That has nothing to do with anybody else. That's a personal. Mm -hmm. But again, if I have more coming out and then I can't pay probation and then I get incarcerated due to that, that takes up my child arrears even more. Right. Yeah. And then that 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 will revoke your probation if I if this court issued a warrant as well. All right. So yes, you, it's everything in your best interest to try to continue to work, bring in as much money as you can. Um, provide for the two children. We need to look into uh, making sure that you're, you need to contact your employer and child support will do the same. Is that right, Ms. Serena Camarillo? You guys will, do you have a Douglas County to send an email to them to look into why the full amount's not being taken out or making sure that it's checked? I think they would wait a couple more paychecks, Your Honor. I think after, after hearing from him, it makes sense. I don't think they're doing anything wrong. I think he's not working 40 hours necessarily. He's trying and that he might be doing that soon. So I think I think they'd wait to see what's going on in the next couple of paychecks. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Now, Mr. Deal, if you don't see it coming out of your paycheck, you need to at least try to pay something until you come back to court. Okay. You have to pay. Again, my guide to you is to pay both moms. $50 a week is 200 a month. That's that covers this mom and it's short on the other mom. But uh, um, I, if you could try to pay close to at least 200 a week until this gets on track or it comes out of your paycheck, then each mom is going to get a split of about 200 equally for their child or children. I'm going to mute you for a moment. All right, Ms. Hardwick, I know you had something to say. Um, we're just trying to, I'm trying to navigate through this to figure out what's going on. He is working. He has an income deduction order. His license reinstated. I think things are going to look up. We just have to give him the opportunity to, to get back on track. Is there anything that you'd like to add to that, to that? Um, yeah. So I'm just going to clear a few things up. Like I know you're, um, when you're asking, the um, timeline of the kids. So we have we have two together. The oldest is eight, and then we have a seven year old. The other two children, the last three of the children, are all roughly the same age. So we do have the two. Prior to all of this happening, um, he went on child support when my youngest was less than one years old. So I know the car situation happened back and forth. I know currently he does live with his mom. She does have a car. She works as well, but from my understanding, they kind of share, especially with his license getting back. I'm glad your license are back. Um, they do kind of share that, but when it comes to the stability of the income, we are eleven thousand dollars behind. So it was like you said, you get frustrated. So it was okay. I let him know, hey, this is what's going on. Hey, these are your arrears. Hey. Have you spoken to child support? Hey, and it was always, yes, I got my receipts. I have this, I have that. But as you can see, $11,000 and our youngest is seven, very little has been paid up until that time. Right. And I, that's why I'm saying we're moving forward now. I think it's going to get better. Um, you've been patient. I appreciate I that. So. Yeah, it's going to get better. I mean, we're, she's the attorney for child support and she's seeing the numbers. He is making the money. We just have to get the right money coming out and um, things will get better. So just hang in there. I don't think it's appropriate to issue a warrant right now. I'm going to reset it to see if the income deduction order, he's getting his license back. Um, if, if he has access to his mom's car, that's great because he can get a better job. The goal is to move forward. And uh, well, whether you do or not, I, mean, I don't need to get into those little, uh, look, all I need to do is get you on track to pay your child support consistently, which would be $100 a week or $200 every two weeks. So both mothers each get $200 a month. They'll probably take more out of, I mean, and that's really not even a child support order, but hopefully Mr. Deal can get on, get a trade, get back on track, start making good money. I, I'm a firm believer that most men don't want to be down and out independent on their mothers, you know, with, with five children out there or six children, whatever they are. But again, you know, Mr. Deal, just 
be aware. Every child has a financial responsibility. Bad enough. Take care of those. And um, that's my guide. And I'm going to ask uh, Judge Scott's clerk to reset it. And what we're looking for when we come back is those consistent payments, Mr. Deal, um, either something of $100 a week. So mom is receiving weekly payments or hopefully the income deduction order is taken effect by then, Ms. Hard Hardig. And then there's no issues because you're getting your monthly payments. OK, so um, we're not going to do a warrant today. Um, hope things look up better for Mr. Deal, because as they look better for you, they look better for your children, um, for all of your children, including the two that are before the court. OK, guys, so we'll see you on May 17th. I believe that's Judge Scott's rescheduled date. OK, and I put some notes in there for her. All right, you guys take care and have a good afternoon. Thank you. Have a good one. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Right, give me one moment before we go. To All right, just a reminder to both of you, stay muted. Good morning to both of you. Let's look at the case here. Dad, you're under an order to pay $792 of what my, my uh, information shows per month. Um, you're past due about $5,400. i am not sure of the status of uh, your, um, your driver's license. Let me look at Judge Scott's notes. All right, looks like this is kind of the first. No, you guys had a hearing in January. So she wanted maybe gave guidance to try to get on track. So it looks like generally when this happens, I see the dad made a payment of $400 in uh, January, $300 about in February, $300 in March. So you are making consistent payments. They're just not sufficient. Generally, this happens when there's a change of employment or some circumstance. I, I need to be brought up to date. Uh, let me see how many. Uh, this is uh, two children. Uh, a, let's see, let's see how old, two, how old are the kids, dad? I'm going to see if dad knows. Nope. Mute Miss Ben Allen. <laughs> let's let dad answer the question. How old are your kids? Nine and 16. How old are they? Nine and 16. Okay. All right. So you guys have two children. Do you have any other children that, that are currently, that you're required to provide child support for? I'm not, I have another child, but I'm not under a child support order. So I do have to support him as well. Okay. So you have an order of, of 792 plus a repay of 10. You're making payments voluntarily, so they're generally we like to get the income to come out of a um, to come out of a paycheck because it keeps your license, you know, stated. So I guess your license is against in good standing as far as you know, Mr. Benjamin. Do you it know? is it's in good standing, y'all. Okay, so they generally re you know revoke that license without you knowing if you don't get back on track. So keep in touch with child support on on the status of your license because once you lose your license, that impacts your ability to have um, a good job, and so. Um, I, I know that's a background. So I'm like, well, you have a beautiful home. So <laughs> but I know it's just a background. But anyway, you may still have a nice home. But tell me what's going on. Why aren't you paying your full um, uh, monthly amount of child support? Well, I'm, I'm self-employed. And um, I didn't realize that the way I was making my payments um, earlier through last year, that I would make the payments at the middle of the month and towards the end of the month. And sometimes uh -huh. at the end of the month, I would end up paying the, the next, like if it's due on the 30th, I'm going to do it on the 31st. Of course, you know, you get charged using your debit card. So I would just have it come out of the account, but it may come out on the first or the second of the next month. So if I was paying, let's just say I paid 600 one month and then I said, OK, well, the next month I'll just pay the thousand, which is the difference. I didn't realize that it would be going into the arrears because it's the next month. So I found that out um, once I got a notice um, late last year about being in the arrears. I didn't even realize that I was that far. And um the, with me being self-employed, I was con contracting with the company to where that contract ended in September. So when that ended, um, it did kind of throw me behind for a second because it was kind of out of the blue. But then over the last 90 days, the last three months, I've had a lot of life changes that have happened, um, which has kind of slowed down my business. I had a cousin who lived with my mom and I and he passed away un um, unexpectedly to where at that point, I had to take care of his funeral expenses. But in the midst of that, my mom went into a coma and was on life support and was in the hospital, still in the hospital now, but um, was on life support during that time. So in the midst of trying to make sure that she was OK, taking care of that situation, I also had an uncle, which is my mother's oldest brother, who I was taking care of his responsibilities and making sure that he was OK because he was having health issues. He ended up in the hospital in which he just recently passed away and where I was having to take care of his funeral arrangements, too. So I had a lot of life um, things that have happened to where it's preventing me from being able to focus solely on my business how I ordinarily would. However, in the midst of that, I'm still making sure that, um, you know, paying what I can uh, until I can get back on track and to make sure that it gets back to being consistent, in which I, you know, have communicated that to Ms. Benjamin as well. Okay, and She's so aware, you, well aware of everything, too. Okay, so that's good for me to hear as a judge. It takes down the necessity to issue a warrant if parties are communicating and co-parenting and raising their children. And I hope that you both are. 
where um, mom's probably saying, well, you know, I'm sorry you went through that. I understand you have the financial responsibility and this is not to be cold spirited, but your responsibility is to help her provide for the children. So you're providing something. So you're, are you saying you can step back up and yeah, start paying yeah, the full amount? Is, yeah, this is just, uh, I mean, life happens. So, I mean, we all have shifts and ups and downs. So it's not like a situation to where I'm not involved or I'm not trying to take care of responsibilities. It's just circumstances have been, you know, in the way things that I couldn't necessarily control that I had to make priority um, over my business, but still be able to balance out as best I can until like now I'm starting to get things back on track. So, yeah. Okay. So you're, are you saying that your business will be able to sufficiently provide for you to be able to pay your full child support payments? Oh, ultimately, forward. yeah, definitely. I mean, that's the point now to where I can focus. Life has slowed down a little bit to where I can now get back on track. So yeah, okay. that's definitely the plan. So by paying half of the payments, it does, uh, it does give you an opportunity to get back on track. Um, but that arrearage keeps escalating while you're past due. So I understand the expenses and everything, but legally i can only worry about mom and her kids you know what i mean it's not personal i understand but the support for the kids is important but if mom understands which i'm sure she's like okay but fine but i have while you're taking care of your family she has to take care of your, your children so um your child support order is about 200 a week i would suggest you try to implement a 200 a week payment if possible then that way you're not going without any past due payments ever because you're paying 200 every week is that something that's possibly doable for you? Because if so, you're never going to have to be in this abandonment court again, because paying weekly, you'll never go 30 days without a payment because this is a criminal proceeding. I know. And while now I understand, you know, how the payment schedule works, you know, I definitely will make sure that whether it's two hundred dollars a week or whether it's, you know, twice a month, however, you know, my okay. income, you know, comes and I'll be able to make sure that I pay it. So okay. I'm clear. OK, and that's that's what you need to get to, because I think, well, I don't know how Judge Scott does it, but if you're consistent for three months, then the case is dismissed because that means you get it. You're pay paying properly on time. You're doing what needs to be done. And then we dismiss the criminal case. Um, and so it looks like you're making payments. So I can't issue a warrant because there's some payments being made. It's not it's not completely compliant, but it looks like you're making efforts. But you're going to have to go ahead and up the ante going forward so that she doesn't file a contempt or there's a whole lot of variables that can work out. Now your child support amount considering that you have two children, um, it's, 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 it's not as bad as some, you know, fathers are have, but it's enough that you're always going to be on that fine line of getting your license suspended, just so you know, because it's so high. So whenever you have an opportunity to pay a little bit more toward that, um, um, and, uh, if you don't mind, uh, what type of employment industry are, are you, um, in your, what's insurance, your agent. insurance, insurance. Okay. All right. So I always give mom the option. So here, my goal for you, sir, is to, like we said, break up your payments, make two payments a month or two or four payments a month, whichever you prefer. But we have to see consistency for the next three months before Judge Scott, three to four months. I don't know how long she reviews her cases before she reviews. But um, even though it's not sufficient, it's appreciated that you made an effort to make some payments. Um, and unfortunately, like you can place on the credit card and pay your credit card back later. Uh, I know you said you're using a debit card, but if you have access to a credit card, you can just pay it and pay it back so you never have to be in this court again. Well, definitely. That makes sense. If I had it, I would be paying. I wouldn't be here. So I, that's not an option, but I that's do understand what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just if you ever have an option, well, I can just yeah, pay 200 yeah. take I mean, whatever I would need to do to catch up, I don't want to have a rear. So this is not something that I'm looking to, you know, do. So I'm definitely not, you know, again, neglecting responsibility. You know, it's just that life happens and I'm working on getting back on track and I'm doing the best I can with what I have. Okay. Just so you know, from a judicial perspective, I get that those things happen. And certainly I have empathy for anybody that has what your mom's going through, your family members are going through, but mom is there alone taking care of the financial needs of your ch child. And that's equally important to the court that I have to just say that because that's that's just how it is, unfortunately, when you're in this system. So again, I'm going to mute you and need to see me. So my goal, mom, is to go ahead and see if he makes his payments equal or substantially complies to what's due for the next uh, two to three months and let, and, and if he is, then the case is done. You know what I mean? Cause nobody wants this system is if, if we have to issue a warrant um, for uh, insufficient payments, which can happen because it's, it says substantially comply, which is usually about 60, 70%. And what you're paying of uh, the 400 was good enough uh, with the substantial compliance, but not the 300 isn't that's way below. Usually it's about 500. If you owe um, eight, then you have to pay at least five to 600 a month for it to be substantially complying. And so you'd have to get up there, but you're saying you can get on track and pay all of it. So um, if you, if a warrant is ever issued, you'll be on child, on 
probation until your child children turn 18 and you don't seem to be a person that needs to be on probation so i'm hoping you'll just step up and take care of it for the rest of your life going to court judges criminal systems so let's hope that doesn't have to happen okay i'm going to meet you for a minute all right ms benjamin um thank you for listening to my banter <laughs> is there anything else you would like to add um no. you're okay no I, I just did want to say that he has um made additional um you know, did what he was supposed to do during the, the course of this hearing with Judge Scott. And I understand his circumstances, but you are correct, Judge, that, you know, the lines of communication still need to be open. And I hope that, you know, this can be continued because he has um, stepped up and done that. So I, I just pray that we can move forward and, and get back on the right track. So thank yeah, you. I, you're, you're welcome. I do too, especially with two children that Seems like you guys are good at co-parenting and working on that. So just keep communication with her, Mr. Benjamin. Try to step up those payments. If she needs something on the side, you know, just be there. Because as long as you guys are in good relations or a good relationship and you're co-parenting, most moms will work with you. But it's when you just drop the ball, don't communicate, don't support, don't, you know, aren't there with your kids. Because if you do have your kids, it, it costs to be with them. You know, you got to take them to what they want, you know, and, and what they'd like to do. Because this is a TikTok world, you know, or kids see things and have expectations, especially a 16 year old, I can't imagine. So um, we'll reset the case in May, see how things are going. I'm making a note for Judge Scott, Mr. Uh, Benjamin, that you're going to do your best to make a uh, um, weekly payments or two times a month closer to the amount that you're supposed to be paying of the seven. I would just say 800 is what you owe a month. Okay. All right, guys. All right. Sounds good. If you don't have any questions, if either. Okay. Thank you. And um, we'll see you guys on May 17th, I think is the court date. And Judge uh, Scott, we'll see you guys then, okay? To double check and if the case is on par and everything looks good, Mr. Benjamin, she'll probably dismiss the case, okay? Thank you so much, Judge Chase. You're welcome. All right, you're welcome. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye. Likewise. Okay, thank you. You know, there was a more recent payment on March 14th. Mr. Mallard paid $401.50 and that was a direct payment. Okay, sounds good. All right. Okay, good morning to both of you. Let's go over the case here. You have. 52. Okay, hold on one second, sir. Please remember, don't unmute yourself without permission of the court, okay? Both of you mute yourselves. You can just raise your hand if you need me to unmute. So, in this case, you have uh, three children. All right, so you have three children, and you are under a child support order to pay $420 per month. But because you have a $9,000 arrearage, they've asked you to pay an additional $84 toward that past due amount. So in essence, your child support is about $505 per month. Um, June 26, there was a payment you were working and it was coming directly out of your paycheck. Even, it was, even if it wasn't the sufficient amount, it was coming out of your paycheck. So back in June 2023, there was a deduction of 233 and then uh, July 10, 233. And then January 251, you made an automatic, a voluntary payment. And then you just made a payment of $401.50 so I can imagine that mom really needs the support if you guys have three children together. Let's see. Give me one moment. Um, I just need to get an update of what's going on. So you did make the 40150 payment, uh, which is appreciated. That's the month of March. Um, and let's just see if you're employed, where you're employed, because you did have a job and it was an income deduction order. Uh, give me an update, Mr. Mallard. You've, you're already under oath. And uh, Ms. Harris, you, I'll hear from you after I hear from him. Okay, go ahead, please, Mr. Mallard. What's going on with you regarding employment? Unmute for me, please, because I, I muted you, if you could unmute. Um, I have an interview today for my job, and I guess the, they'll be reaching out. Child support will be reaching out because I'm, I'm going to get the job today at 1 p.m. Okay, and I right. also made another payment of 150 yesterday, so that's a total of 550 I don't know if it posted yet. Okay, uh, awesome. Thank you. So you, so let me explain how, the, how this child support criminal abandonment warrant works. Um. We try to get an income deduction order first because then we won't issue warrants because the employer will take the money out directly. Secondly, until it comes out of your paycheck, you have to make the payments. But I would encourage you to make two divide your payment and make two payments a month instead of trying to pay one lump sum payment until it comes out. So in your case, you'd be paying two fifty twice a month until it comes out of your paycheck. That way, you never have a thirty day period without support being paid. It's what happens if it's over thirty days. Then oh, it's an abandonment warrant that can be applied for. But to stop that system. Then if you we look, I look at um, two if you can pay two fifty twice a month on the eighth and the twentieth, but it has to be uh, at least ten days before the end of each month because then it goes to the next month and it shows you went thirty days without a payment. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes, ma'am. So you paid for April. 
I mean, March, don't pay any more money in March, even though you have a past due. I need you to move forward so we can make sure you're not in uh, in violation for criminal purposes. So now you're going into April. And so April, you just need to make two payments of 250 um, just because you get a job. It's going to take almost six weeks for it to come out of their paycheck. So what Judge Scott's going to be looking at, are you paying voluntarily paying 250 per pay period or you put it on a credit card if you're fortunate enough to have a credit card and then pay yourself pay your credit card back, but there has to be consistent payments of $250 every other week. And as far as you know, your license has not been suspended, Mr. Mallard, you're in good standing. Yes. You may want to check periodically because with $9,000, your license is probably on the cusp of being revoked at any time if you're not consistent. So if I were you, I would call your child support office, ask them where your standing is, and then you want to work on chiseling down that $9,000 if possible. Okay. All right. So you made a payment this month, so no warrant can be issued. You've made a payment that'll cover mom for March, and then we just need to get you consistent. I don't know how long judge um, or it comes out of your paycheck. Either you're voluntary making the payments two fifty twice a month, or um, uh, we have an income deduction order where it's coming out, and then generally the case will be dismissed. The criminal case would be dismissed at that point. So um, a little bit of guidance because you have three children and mom is providing support, and your income is to contribute to your three children. Um, if possible, just try to put money aside. Just so if you have to have a transition of employment, it may not get a warrant issued, but it's just not, it's not, you know, going through this process is not a pleasant process for anybody to have to keep coming to court, missing work, you know, um, under the uh, reign of possibility of having uh, a warrant issued for your arrest. So um, I think you're in pretty good standing now. I don't see any reason to issue a warrant. We just have to have monthly payments for six months straight before we could dismiss the case. And that's voluntary payments or by an income deduction order. All right. Do you have any questions, Mr. Mallard? No, ma'am. Don't make any more payments this month. If you want to, you can, but you need to make sure you make your two payments in April, two payments in May, so that when it comes back to court, all the payments are posted, okay? Okay. All right, hold on one second for me. Okay, Ms. Harris, um, is, there, and is there anything that you'd like to add looking forward? Um, I would, because when we came, went to court last February, I believe, the judge ordered him to pay the difference from January, because he only paid 250 and ordered him to pay February, which he did not pay. He only paid yesterday, which was for March. So it's no consistency there. It's like if the judge ordered him to, he was supposed to pay seven fifty. If you can look at the notes, he was supposed to pay seven fifty this month before we went back to court. Or she said she would issue a warrant out for his arrest. Brett has been working since January, and he only pays when it's time to go to court. He have missed. He have not paid the full January. We've been going to court since December. The judge ordered him to pay for something in December. He never paid it. In January, he was supposed to pay the five hundred. He paid two fifty. February, I did not receive anything from Brett. And then here it is, March. He just paid yesterday. So the court. I mean, I know the last time we spoke with the judge, she said she was going to redo the case for March the fifteenth, and he needs to have the full payment of seven fifty in in hand and he have not paid it so i'm not sure what he said he paid 150 dollars yesterday but i only see the 400 so he's behind in what the judge ordered him to pay that doesn't i don't see the notes of 750 it says 420 um but i mean you're probably right and i'm sorry if she was here then she would probably make a decision on issuing a warrant but doesn't make any sense to issue a warrant when he's getting a new job and then we're going to get it directly out of his paycheck so i understand your frustration I'm sorry. He's not, telling the he's not telling the truth. He's not telling the truth. He's been I can working. email you the um oh, oh, hold I can on. send you, you the email, email today. today. You do not unmute yourself, Mr. Mallard, without the consent of the court. Okay. All right. Hold on. Okay. Go ahead. Unmute. You, you what? You have proof of employment, Mr. Mallard. You can unmute for me, please. I was working through a temp service student, but I am getting the I'm going full time with them. I have a an email from the talent acquisition to okay, prove can to you, you that I'm getting. Can you forward that email to the same email address that you received from our clerk for the hearing and then my clerk can send it to me? All right. I just sent the email over to you. Okay, because I don't have it yet. Thank you, Judge. Okay. And I made a note to let Judge um, Scott know, Ms. Harris, that you'd prefer to have a warrant issued. That's going to be up to her. But I'm resetting the case to May 17th um, to Mr. Mellor. Let's be clear. Um, I've, um, well, why don't you just share with me what my expectations are as a judge so we could just go forward with this case with the reset without having to issue a warrant. Go ahead, please, Mr. Mellor. Uh, I can't see you. You said what again? What, my, what, what, are the, what are you understanding the expectations are to move forward to uh, to reset the case? 
for the payments in May, um, April and oh, May. Oh, you said just make the two consistent payments of two fifty twice a month, and mm -hmm. just make the payment. Yeah, just make sure the payments are consistent. And the lady only wanted me to pay seven hundred. It wasn't seven fifty, so I, I do have the receipts uh, in my email also where I paid the one fifty. So it is a total of five fifty. So well, I'm only short hundred fifty dollars. That was in February, though I think, and 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 so you needed to pay that in February is is what Mom was saying. And you paid uh, it. In she March. said paid it. She yeah, she said paid it before I come back to court in March. Maybe she. I don't know. That's not what the, her notes say. So she probably did say that. But there's this isn't worth issuing. We're not going to be able to issue a warrant because you didn't make a five fifty payment for the month of March. Yes, you did miss February. Um, uh, but you have to be consistent going forward, and then she can decide if she's going to issue a warrant. She generally doesn't because our goal is to get you consistent, paying the child support so mom can receive her child support to, um, on a monthly basis consistently so that she can provide for your three children that the two of you have together. All right. So the case is being reset to May 17th. Um, I did put that you wanted the warrant, Ms. Harris, for failure to pay the, the 750 And so if uh, once Judge uh, reviews these notes, if she decides to go forward with a warrant, which I don't think she will, because it makes no no sense if he's got a job coming in and will get consistent payments. So she may decide to wait until May to issue that warrant. And if she does, Mr. Mallard, you'll know then, but that's the pressure to keep paying the two. You can't pay and come to court. That, that, that can't happen anymore. You have to pay twice a month. Okay, you understand? Because they're going to have to issue a warrant. You can't just pay when you, right before you come to court. All right, that's it. We'll reset the case to May 17th. Mom, I did put a note that you you uh, prefer a warrant be issued because he paid five fifty instead of seven yes. instead of seven fifty. Okay. Yep. Go ahead. I'll hear from you, Miss. Uh, you can unmute, please. It's not that I want a warrant issue for his arrest. I just need consistent payments from Brett, and it's well, that's not what I just, Miss Harris. That's what I just said. That's what I just said. I hear you, and I agree a hundred percent. But that's what I just said. So hopefully, if he doesn't get those consistent, pay he knows that. I mean. He knows you've got three kids. Y'all were together together to make three kids. He knows you need that money consistently. So come on, Mr. Mallard. That's a lot for her to just. And he, we have a child that's in college right now. It, he. Congratulations okay. on that. But yeah. And it's me. It's nothing to do with him. But it's just. I, I get you. And that's that's why. Yeah, I get you. You know, congratulations on having your child in college. And um, come on, Mr. Mallard, just step up and do your child support. Because for three kids, that honestly is not a lot of money to be able to provide for three children. I mean, that's enough to pay maybe the car insurance and maybe some food, but that's not enough to provide for three children. But that's that's what the courts are showing. So um, I'll make a note for you, Ms. Harris, that, you know, your main focus is the consistency. And, and hopefully this time it works. OK, if not, I'll let her know. Judge, I'll make the notes for Judge Scott. OK. Okay, thank you. All right, see you guys May 17th. Good job on your on your older child. Um, Please stay you. muted. I'm waiting for him to connect to audio. <laughs> All right, I'm going to um, go over your case. Uh, you guys have, uh, let's see here, one child, $300 per month, primary child support payment. Both of you are moving so much. <laughs> Try to stay still for me or keep your cameras situated. And $30 repay. It looks like you guys came to court um, and... Uh, Dad made a payment February 1st for 300. He probably made that payment for January, actually, and it just posted in February. So, Dad, what happens is, um, uh, stay muted for me. What happens is if you paid like in the last five days of the month, it doesn't count until the next month. So it looks like you did pay $300 in January, just posted on the 1st of February. You paid $300, but they took out some um, fees for February. And so now it looks like a consistent and you just have to pay for March. So just curiosity, um, uh, you can unmute for me, please, Mr. Scott. So you're making voluntary payments. Are you employed where we can just take the money directly out of your paycheck or why are you making voluntary payments? Um, I'm not currently working right now. Oh, okay. But you're just making the payments. How long has it been since you've been unemployed? Um, I want to say about a year. Okay. Why? What's up? I'm um, taking care of my mother right now. Okay. So... You're taking care of your mom full time. You can't get a part time job to pay child support. I mean, I I do little odd jobs and stuff. Okay, well, as long as, as long okay, as long as you're paying, that's fine. It's just it's easy if there's an income deduction order. You have a five thousand arrears. Have you touched bases with the child support office to make sure your license is not suspended? Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I, I reinstated them. Okay, all right. So you made your payments. You just have to keep making payments consistently. Um, it's three hundred dollars. You could break it into two payments if that's easier for you. One fifty every two weeks, so you're never thirty days past due. 
Um, that's what I recommend as a judge, because what it does is it gets mom the two payments a month consistently, like the first, fifth, fifth and the 20th. If you pay after the 20th and it goes into the next month or after the 25th, it may go into the next month. But you have to I have to have consistent payments. But it looks like you are consistent. Um, you're paid. You paid uh, January. You paid February. When are you going to pay March? Um, in a couple of days. OK, because you have until probably like a week to pay the end of March. So it doesn't default you back to not showing a payment for March. OK. And okay. Uh, I can share with you if. If you have the ability to pay it via credit card and then pay it back, then that's also an option. I think a lot of people don't know that. And if you need to break it up into two payments, um, it, you know, it doesn't matter. Uh, Miss Bowler kind of um, had a reaction to you saying you take care of your mom. And I get that. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sure your mom appreciates that. But you're doing part time stuff to make income. And as long as you're paying it, then no warrant can be issued. It doesn't matter how you're getting the income. So give me one month. But you have to be consistent on your payment. So, again, I'm going to suggest you either. Um, maybe so your child support payments are actually 330 now uh, because you have to pay back toward that arrear so your license isn't suspended again. So that means you're paying, um, what is that, 160, let me do my calculation so I don't make a, make a mistake on that. Uh, it would be 330 divided by two, and that's 165 twice a month. Okay. okay. And then you're consistent, and I don't know how long Judge Scott keeps her cases open. Generally, I keep them open for six months. And if you're consistent, so the consequences, if you're not consistent in making your payments, is a warrant can be issued and you'd be on probation until your youngest child turns 18. And who wants to do that in the criminal system, right? So just consistently make your payments as close as you can, you know, uh, to 165 is the goal every two weeks. Or if you want to make one payment, you still can. But I'm going to mute you for a moment. And Ms. Baller, is there anything else to add? We're just going to reset the case for review. Um, that, that's pretty much all we can do because he is making the payments. He just has to make the March payment. And then we'll see if he made the April payment, the May payment. And then reset the case to May if he's consistent and he continues to stay consistent. Judge Scott will likely dismiss the case. Yes, Your Honor, that's fine. I'm just, my thing is, she's in daycare, she's in pre K, um, so that I can work. So it's like her daycare is every week. Um, so if, if she has to split it up twice a month, that works because the full child support goes directly to her daycare. So that okay. that's one less I have to worry about taking care of for her. Okay. Yeah. So Mr. Scott, if you could do 165 every two weeks, you know, you choose the dates, the 5th and 20th are usually good times to do it. 1st and 15th, just do whatever you can do to try to make those two payments consistently. Then you're good to go. Usually once we get dads on track, they're, they're able to keep on track because the consequences just aren't worth it. So, um, you know, having to go to jail, having to come to court, having the judge to, you know, peer into your personal life and stuff like that. So just keep up your payments. You're doing fine. Um, just see if you could up it to 165 twice a month. Or if you want to make the one payment of 300 or 330, it would include your arrearage to avoid your license. Um, <clears throat> we're just going to reset the case to monitor it in in, um, in May, okay? May 17th. Okay. But so far, you're doing good. Just keep keep up the payments, okay? All right, thanks. All right, you're welcome. Okay, we'll see you guys, Ms. Bauer. Thank you. Uh, May 17th is your reset court date, same time, same place, okay? All right. Thank you. Have a good day. All right, you guys have a good day. Bye-bye. <clears throat> so she sent in a request to recall the warrant. All right. Uh, Mr. Stroud, um, can you adjust yourself? I can't see anything but the top of your head, and I don't have it. You don't have any light. All right. So it looks like you and uh, Ms. Jordan <clears throat> have a uh, a four or five year old child together. You're under an order of child support to pay four hundred dollars per month. You have an arrearage of thirty six hundred dollars. It looks like you were working um, last year. And your uh, income deduction order was taking the money out in 2023. There was some type of interception May 2023, but there's been no payments at all since May 2023. So in two more months, it'll be a whole year with no child support. So it looks like judge did already issue the warrant, but it looks like Miss Jordan asked the judge not to, to recall the warrant. And she did. And she reset the case to try to get an update. But it doesn't look good to me as a judge who handles these because you haven't made any, you haven't made any uh, payments at all. So what's going on with you, Mr. Stroud? Um, I've been looking for a new job. I've been trying to find something consistent. In between that, I have been reaching out to Miss Jordan and getting things done for our child. Okay, so you had a good job before, and then you kind of went downhill because you lost that employment, but it's been over a year. I understand it's not that easy to get a new job, um, but um, like, like there's nothing being paid at all. And so there's, it's just, have you gone to the, has Judge Scott sent you to, what county do you, do you live in? DeKalb. 
Okay. I'm going to give you a telephone number. Okay. This place is always hiring. They need workers badly, is my understanding. Need good workers. And do you have a pen or a pencil? Um, I'm ready. Okay. I want you to call this number 470-545-1087. That's an employment agency that is always looking for employees. I mean, I, I've been hand, handling this for a while. They reached out uh, about a year ago and saying, we're just looking for dads that are willing to work. And okay. she has openings all the time. So I am, I am encouraging you to call that agency today because you don't have a warrant should be issued and, and it's, she's giving you grace not to issue. How are you supporting yourself? Um, I'm not really, I just been looking for something that's more consistent. Yeah, but if you, even if you're getting something that's inconsistent, you should try to pay something. You know, you don't have to pay the full amount. I think dads get kind of caught up thinking, oh, I have to pay that whole amount and I don't have it. But you have to pay something every week. Like if you're just doing little side hustles, moving companies, doing something, and then you just have to pay a weekly payment. In your case, it would be like $100 a week, but just start paying something every week. So you don't have to go to have a warrant issue because you'd have to turn yourself in. You'd be in jail and you'll be on uh, child uh, probation until the child turns 18. You got to turn this around. You, okay. you have to turn this around and you've got to do it fairly quickly. You know, I know it's not easy just to get a job. I have an adult son as well. And, he, you know, it, it was on the news the other day. It's really, really hard to get a job. People say they they need people, but you have to almost know somebody to get your foot in the door. Well, I'm giving you a contact. Call them today. Um, were you in the fatherhood program already to try to help you? Uh, let's see. Did you yes, go to the fatherhood program or attend it? Yes. Okay. And what happened with that? Um, I was I was in contact with them, but I had got a new phone and my email got all messed up and everything like that. Okay, Mr. Stroud, you're going to have to step up. So has he been removed from the program, Mr. Rena Camarillo? I'm looking right now, Your Honor, to see um, back on January, trying to see where that went awry. Don't see. No, it says here on January 5th that he failed to complete the terms and conditions. Um, so he was not enrolled. So it doesn't say what that is, but typically it's not appearing. So we probably just didn't come to the initiation. Do you know whether or not we can request that he give one, have one more opportunity to attend the fatherhood program? Yes, I'm I would love to... one more opportunity to be in the program. I'm trying to look to see how many. So I'm not over the program. I do know. I don't see any notes in here about sometimes they will make you wait a period of months if you've you know tried and, and not done it. But um, I do think it's worth reaching out. He should reach out today and see if he can get on it. Um, yeah, it looked like January 2nd, you were supposed to attend an orientation session. Okay, so do you have the contact information, Mr. Stroud? Because the warrant's already, she's already recalled the warrant, but if something doesn't start happening soon, you're going to go ahead and have the warrant issued. Can you adjust okay. your phone? Because I'm just seeing the top. Of it does look like the email address is part of the problem. That is, if you could, in the chat, give me his email address. That came back as undeliverable. My email? Mm -hmm. uh, so you said add it to the chat? Yes, please, if you don't mind. Just so that when they once you do call and you get set back up for fatherhood program, it looks like one of the issues was they tried to send you the virtual orientation. Um, they sent it via mail and email, and the email came back. Um, did you get it? I did. Let me compare that quickly to what we have so I can see if that's a problem. Okay, so you have two tools now. You can call this employment agency, and I need you to do that today. And you can do the uh, call the fatherhood program. It, generally, if you're participating in the fatherhood program and they are you making the payments in compliance with what they recommend, um, where are my notes? From going? that email address, does look like it's the one we had that was returned back as undeliverable. Huh. Do you have another email address that you use frequently? Um, yes, I'm going to put it in the chat. So what are you doing like to just, I mean, you seem young enough. Can you just kind of get on with a moving company or something just to start getting some income so you can start making weekly payments? 
Um, yes, ma'am. I'm going to try my best trying to look for something that's consistent, but I, I can try to do that. Okay. Please give a call to that number that I gave you today, and let's try to get you in the fatherhood program. <laughs> now, they're not a miracle worker. You have to do the work, but try to call that employment agency, the number that I gave you, and mm -hmm. see if you can get an employment and you need to start making $100 a week um, toward child support <clears throat> or as much as you can, but I'm just going to let for some reason, Judge Scott recalled the warrant. I'm going to let her decide if we're going to reset the case. And that gives you two months to just try to get a warehouse job. Do you have a vehicle? Um, yes, ma'am. But right now, um, there's a hold on my license. Okay. Um, so you call child support today. Usually when you enroll in the fatherhood program or you get a new job with an income deduction order, then they'll start taking the money directly out of the paycheck and they'll reinstate your license. Or is it a hold through something else? No, I believe it. With um, with child support. Yeah, well, that's not gonna. We that's our goal is to help you get your license so you can drive your vehicle and make money to support yourself and your child. So, um, can you call the child support agency first? Call. Okay, so here's what I'd like you to do: re-register for the fatherhood program, and we're setting that up now. The second mm -hmm. is going to be to go ahead and call the employment agency for the number that I gave you, and the third is is you're going to call child support and ask them what you could do to reinstate your license. But generally, they'll reinstate it if you could get a full time job or a part time job that takes the money directly out of your paycheck. So okay. you've got to get all those balls rolling. We'll get an update in May. If you do side hustles, you know, helping a friend move, call the moving companies. They always need people, you know, just call them and say, hey, I need a job. Uh, um, if you Google, like, just do a Google research on moving employment jobs near me or warehouse jobs near me, it's going to come up. I know they're not easy, but moving jobs, I think, are easier to get than anything for right now. But call that number and hopefully... Uh, um, the uh that that business can try to get you some employment so the case will be reset to may 17th those are your goals that i'm giving you so the judge uh so you don't have to be picked up and arrested and and, and uh, be taken into custody okay okay all right it's on you mr stroud you got to do better okay okay thank you all right we'll see you guys we'll see you may 17th try all to right. make some payments whatever you can pay even if it's just 200 dollars a month for the next couple months try to pay something so it shows you're making an effort to do something fifty dollars a week seventy five dollars a week just if you know seventy five dollars a week ends up to it gets up to a uh, three hundred a month so if you can you know if you think about it well i'm probably spending that much on food or whatever figure it out but try to get those payments going to seventy five dollars a week just to get on track and then a warrant won't be issued because it shows that you're making effort to get things back together okay okay all right and when you were working you were doing well so we just need to get you back in the employment industry that's what i'm seeing okay uh, that's it, sir. We'll see you on May 17th. They'll send you notice. Did you get his updated email address, Ms. Ford? Yes, well? ma'am, I did. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. All right, Mr. Stroud, get out there, get, make those calls, check on your driver's license, try to get a job, go in stores, go in Walmart, go in Quick Trip, go in places and say, hey, I'm in need of a job. Are you guys hiring? Go in locations and ask, you know, go to uh, you know, McDonald's, it doesn't matter. McDonald's is paying $16 an hour now, $15, $16 an hour. Nobody wants to do fast food. I get it. But for right now, if it's going to keep you out of jail, just go into any fast food places around you and say, Hey, I need a job immediately. Are you guys hiring? Get out there and be a foot soldier and try to see if you could find some employment. Okay. Okay. All right. So, okay. Uh, Take care. You're just child support. support, abandonment warrant. Okay, guys. Just give me I'm a little bit confused on this case. Miss uh, Arena Kimbrell, I'll, I'll need your help on it. Um, you have one child that appears to be who has a birthday today, um, I guess 14, turning 14 today. And that child lives with you in DeKalb County. Um, he's under an order to pay $600 per month, but it's only showing that he is only past due 600. I'm not sure if that's incorrect. It looks like you have not received any payments since 2010. Um, is that right? No, ma'am. It's not right. Um, he paid that one court order and then he quit his job. And then he just, he was sending me $400 over the years. And I've asked him for an increase and he told me no. Okay. So I'm just a little perplexed. He's he, only one month past due. Why, what happened? Your honor, I, I'm not sure he's one month past due. I'm trying to look at the records that might, my, my question would be, when did she reopen the case with DCSS? Okay. Uh, it might just be, we haven't adjudicated the arrears yet. Okay. I'm trying to see. It looks like he lives out of state. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. So it looks like this will be a UFSA case. It looks like February 26th, they sent an FIW. So, we'll, you know, that won't be in place yet, but should be in place shortly if he's still working there. 
And when did you open the case with DCSS? The first time I opened it was in 2010. I okay. recently. I don't mean to interrupt. I've got it. February 22nd, the custodial parent came in. Does that sound correct? And yes, uh, reopened the case. So, Your Honor, that's why it just shows $600 in arrears. Because when she came in, she fills out something called an affidavit of arrears because he sure. could have been paying her directly. We don't put that money on the system as being owed until we've done an adjudication order. Okay. And, and if you want an increase, you have to go to child support to get an increase. You know, him not wanting to give you an increase doesn't create. When is the last time you've received a payment? December 15th. Okay. And when she did the affidavit of arrears, the amount she said he owes is $52,449 and 78 cents. Okay. So since he lives out of state, Ms. Daniel, you have to, have to, this has to go through an interstate process because he doesn't live in, in DeKalb or the state of Georgia. So you have to go through the UFSA process. The abbrevi that the abbreviation is, uh, what does UFSA stand for? Uniform Interstate, interstate. Mm -hmm. Families Support Federal Support Act. Act. Family Support Act. Okay, something like that. So you can't go through our process because he lives out of state. So, um, Miss Arena Camerlo, what's your recommendation on how she contacts him? Um, you know what, Miss Ford, if you and Miss, um, we used to have a contact for UIFs, and I don't know if you could help us with that, that both of our clerks will have that UIFs contact information, if you could help us get that number. But it's through the district attorney's office because he's out of state. We can't handle it with this process. He has to be in the state of Georgia. You have to go through the interstate procedures. And so we're going to give you that information and you can contact them to let them know that this is a, a UFC case. Go ahead, please. It looks like they, they, they've they noted that, like they're transferring it. What she can do is just call. It looks like um, she can call DCSS. Just, I mean, UFC is still within their umbrella. So it's just a different office that enforces it than our office with the DA's office. So she can still just call the agency like normal and say, hey, how much longer um, do you anticipate the transfer taking to UFSA? Um, and then they and then they'll just do it it's still through DCSS. OK. So I'll try to break it down to you. This is a state. This our court can only handle per, people that live in state, the father, the non-custodial parent. He's out of state. So you have to go through a different process. You've already started that process. You'll, you'll just have to find out from the UFSA division what the status is on the transfer of your case to UFSA because you just reopened it in February. So we're not able to process your case. It would have to be dismissed from our court because we don't have jurisdiction over your case. But they said that. OK. Yeah, I know it's confusing, but he's been out of state. And so they have to you have to handle it through the through child support, but through the UFS division, not this abandonment of court procedure. You have to go through that UFS and that's through the district attorney's office. So they will handle how to proceed with the case. Because they said, because I'm in the state of Georgia and I'm the custodian parent, it will be here. Yeah, you have to go through the UFS proceeding, ma'am. Those are probably clerks telling you that. And I'm a judge telling you'd have to go through. It is proper because you live here, but he has to live here too. We don't have jurisdiction over somebody that lives out of state. Okay. So what's the court proceeding? You say U.S. U-I-F-S-A. And it's already in the system. You just need to keep, keep just call them and see, can I get an updated status on my U.S. proceeding? And then they'll they'll intercept and take the money directly from his income out of state and they'll forward the money to you if he's working. You could always follow contempt as well, but um, with DCSS, because he does have an excessive arrearage, you can talk to them about filing a contempt and go back to the civil court. So, Your Honor, what they'll do is UIFSA will get the other state to file a contempt in the county he's in. Um, that way they can proceed with everything where he is, is typically how that process is going to work. That's what they'll ask them to do. Okay, sounds good. All right, Ms. Daniel. so just follow the UFSA process. And apologies that we can't help you in this court today, but that's the procedures under Georgia law, so you have to follow the UFSA process, okay? Okay, thank you. You're very welcome. Have a good day. Happy birthday uh, to Lauren today. I guess it's her birthday. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a good day. Sorry we can't help you today. Bye-bye. Thank you. All right, so um, I'm sorry. Um, is there a particular way you want me to address you other than Ms. Moed? Ms. Mohead's correct. Okay. All right. So you have two children um, with Mr. Trabusley. Um, there have been some payments right. made so, over the years. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, are you watching this on YouTube? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Have you taken off the YouTube channel? Yes. I removed it. Okay. Yeah. Because that's that's what's giving me the feedback. Um, I'm but sorry. You're not that's okay. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Um, I'm not recording. No. Okay. All right. So you guys have two children. Looks like there's never been consistent payments. Um, 
Uh, you're here. He's not here. We tried to call him, emailed him. We've had no contact. You said last known address. When's the last time that you've had any contact with him? Um, he had emailed me a couple of days ago, letting me know that he made a payment. So it did. It, it's not that he made a payment. It's that he has a job now and the money's coming directly out of his paycheck. Basically. Yeah, that's an, that's an income deduction order. So we can't issue a warrant if there's an income deduction order and they're going to be taking out the monthly amount of his income. But because it's just happening, we're, we're going to have to monitor it and see if it's a consistent payment. So because it did come out on March 13th, there was a withholding. So I don't know if he gets paid once a month. I mean, uh, once weekly or if he gets paid twice a month, which is, I guess, it's called biweekly. Um, so we have to just watch the case to see what's going on and make sure the money's coming out consistently. And if it's coming out consistently, then we cannot issue a warrant. OK, um, I'm, I'm sorry. You have a question? Yes. So um, with with this history, it's it's extremely inconsistent. The last time he made a payment was May of twenty twenty. Three. No, I know. I have all the. I have all the okay. information. But, but this is a criminal hearing. So for a criminal hearing, the standards different from a civil hearing. So for example, if you filed a contempt, meaning you want the judge to find that he's had the ability to pay and he's not wanting to all these years that are past due, you can ask DCCSS to file a motion for a contempt with a superior court judge. This is a criminal proceeding, and the proceedings pretty much state if there's an income deduction order in place, I I can't issue a warrant for his arrest. So that's why we need to monitor. The income deduction order, see what's going on, see how the payments are going. And if they're consistent, then we cannot issue a criminal warrant for his arrest. It's not based on the past. It's based upon what's going now and into the future. And this is kind of like a diversion court. We try to get them to come to court. We try to get them to participate, explain what's going on. I'm not sure why he's not here. But technically, because there's an income deduction order, I can't issue a warrant for his arrest. But you can handle the, the past due amount and the inconsistencies with the civil court which is by filing a motion for contempt. So you just need to file contact child support, contact your agent, let them know that you want to file a contempt of court against him. So because he paid two days ago before the hearing, he didn't pay incidentally. It didn't, he didn't pay voluntarily. It's coming out of his paycheck. When there is an income deduction order in place, we cannot issue a warrant because the federal government is stating that they're taking the money directly out of his income. So we're going to monitor those payments and make sure they're consistent. I know it's hard to understand, but those are the procedures. Okay. So the email that he sent me, which it, it, sa it says the child support payments are starting to come out of my check this week. That's right. So that's, that's exactly what he sent me. The last time I heard from him was two and a half years ago. I understand, um, ma'am. You're mixing it up. Again, I understand you haven't heard from him, but criminally, he is now complying, so I can't issue a criminal warrant for his arrest. We're going to reset it to May 17th. You need to handle the past due and the inconsistency by filing a contempt with Superior Court. I can't issue a warrant because he has an income deduction order and the payments are going to be coming out directly from his paycheck. And so I have to follow the guidelines that are given to me as a judge. And so we're going to reset the case in May, see if you're getting your payments through an income deduction order you know, sufficient for the amount that he's supposed to be paying. And if so, then we cannot go forward with a criminal warrant. Okay. What, how, I'm trying to let you know that these are possibly not paychecks. They are paychecks. The uh, miss, this is the attorney. This is the attorney from child support. And she said it's coming out of his paycheck. He can't As pay an, we, an employer. Yes. That's what I'm trying to explain. It's an employer and the money's coming directly out of his paycheck through his employer and it's going through child support. It's not a voluntary payment. You still have a remedy, but it's through civil court, okay? So we'll reset the case. Um, I understand your frustration with all the past, but you just filed this with us. So when you it's just file it with us, then we can't just go back and try to correct everything. It's the first time coming to our court. I understand the past due amount, but we have to get what's coming to us. And then we move forward. And if he fails, if he loses his job and 30 days goes without a payment, then we could issue the warrant for his arrest. He didn't lose a job. He lost a business that he's had since 2015. Okay. Well, he's working now. So I have to look at what's going on now. He's had his own business since okay, 2015. Now, that is not a basis. Of, listen, I'm going to tell you this one more time. Okay, because you're not hearing me. If you're upset about the past 10 years or whatever that may be, you need to file a contempt in the civil court. For a criminal warrant, it is for me to determine 
whether or not in, in the payments, when it comes to court, going forward, if he's failed to make payments consistently on a monthly basis, I cannot address the past, but a civil court judge can. So I encourage you to file a civil contempt against him so that judge can decide what should be done. I can't do it in a criminal court. He's making it, it, a payment was made. He's going to be making payments. I can only look at what's being done while we're in court and moving forward. If he violates it going forward, then we could issue the warrant. They're two different so he processes. Owes, so he owes $13,000. And because a payment of was made of $133 two days ago before the abandonment, abandonment warrant hearing, he's going to be let go and just excused. He's not going to be let go. We're going to be monitoring his payments going forward. Okay, why don't you call contact child support? Ms. Serena Camarillo is the attorney for child support. Um, I think I've explained it three times of how the process works. Uh, again, you just filed this action with us in January and you want me to go back and just do what needs to be done, but we have our own procedures. So you have civil remedies available to you, but I don't, not under the criminal court system. So Ms. Serena Camarillo, you want to talk to her about the contempt, please? Yes, Your Honor. It's like the court stated, uh, you know, she can file a private contempt or she can ask DCSS to file a contempt. At that time, you know, after he's served, then once he's served, they will go forward with the contempt. And that's when they'll address, you know, hey, you owe this big chunk of change. And what's a purge amount that you can pay that would be fair? You know, is it a couple thousand dollars by a certain date? Um, you know, they'll look at how much he's been making. They'll try to look at tax returns or what he's making um, and see based on his ability to pay what is a reasonable purge amount to address the back due support. Um, that's how the contempt process works in Superior Court. So you can contact them and follow through and ask for the contempt, but we're going to reset this case to check on the status of the payments from the income deduction order. And so we're resetting the case to May 17th to make sure that the payments are consistent. And then Judge Scott will probably reset it again to make sure you're getting your consistent monthly payments. And if so, that uh, again, there is no there is no authority for us to issue a warrant if he's getting making consistent payments of the five forty nine plus the twenty five going forward. So I understand you're frustrated, but this is the proper procedures for a criminal warrant to be issued at this time. It can be on May seventeenth if the payments aren't being made or substantially complying, or they're not coming out of his paycheck. Then the judge can re, uh, Judge Scott can consider issuing the warrant. Okay, so we'll see you on May seventeenth. Right. We'll see you on May seventeenth, and uh, you can go ahead and follow up with the Department of uh, uh, with your agent to go ahead and follow contempt against them. That's the appropriate process. Or you, if you have the funds, you could hire an attorney and do it yourself. Probably it will go much faster. All right. All right. I Thank appreciate you. it. You're very welcome. Have a good day. We'll see you, you on well. May 17th. Okay.